Well, good evening, book lovers. Welcome to episode 14 of Catholic Live. I am your host, Amy Catapan. You can find me everywhere on social media under my pen name for children's books. That is AJ Catapan. Tonight's episode of Catholic Live is brought to you in part by the Hello Prayer app. And if you haven't checked out the Hello Prayer app, please, please do yourself a favor. Go follow the link either in the YouTube show notes or the footnote in Facebook or my bio on Instagram and go get your free trial of the Hello Prayer app. Okay, now this is different from you just downloading the free version from your app store. This is the premium version you're gonna get if you follow my link, hello.app slash Catholic Live. And by premium version, I mean all the prayers are unlocked. You can even check out my favorite thing that I've been using recently, and that is the Lenten Music Playlist. It is a gorgeous collection of Lenten music that you can have on while you're praying, doing some scripture reading, or, you know, just when you want to feel a little extra Lenty in the best of ways, feel a little extra Lenty. All right. Well, tonight I'm really excited to bring to you an interview with Amanda Lauer. She's someone I once carpooled with, on, a way, on the way to a Catholic writing conference. So Amanda, let me tell you a bit about her. Amanda Lauer is the author of the best-selling Heaven Intended Civil War series. Her book, A World Such as Heaven Intended, won the 2016 Callow Award for Young Adult Literature. Lauer won Best Writer Red Letter Awards for her work on the 2019 movie, The Islands. She collaborated on the recently released children's book, Dubby, The Double-Headed Eagle, written by Edward Habsburg, the Archduke of Austria and ambassador to the Holy See. Might want to check that out, out too. Her next story, Lucky and Blessed, part of the Catholic teen books anthology, Treasures, Visible and Invisible, was released today. March 1st, 2021. And if you want to hear more about that anthology, stay tuned because I'm probably going to be doing an interview with another one of the authors from that anthology coming up. But for today, please help me welcome to the show, author of the new book, Anything But Groovy, Amanda Lauer. Woo! Hi. Woo! Hi, Amanda. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. Appreciate it. I'm so happy to have you here. Okay, so you've got a lot going on. I just read your bio. You've got this new children's book um, that you helped to collaborate with the Archduke of Austria and the Ambassador to the Holy See. You've got this Catholic Teens Books Anthology that I'm going to be talking about later this month with another author, but we're here to talk about anything but groovy. Okay, great title. Tell Thank us what you. it's about. Anything but groovy is a story about a 13-year-old girl in the modern day who unwillingly travels back in time and has to live her mom's 13 year old life for a year in 1974. Okay, this reminds me of, oh, I'm blinking now. What was that movie where they switched the bodies, the mom and, and the Freaky daughter. Friday. Freaky Friday, thank you so much. I yeah, exactly. Freaky Friday. Yeah, okay. it's supposed to be kind of a, a cross between Freaky Friday and Back to the Future, so. Oh, great, yes, because you've got the time travel thing. Okay, so. You're a child of the 70s, oh, I suppose. I am. Yes. Okay. I am. How much of this story is elements of your own life and your own upbringing? Yeah. Well, the, the background was my life. It's this small town in northern Wisconsin that I grew up in. It's a, a small Catholic school that I went to in a small church and, and the nuns that were our teachers and the priests who led our past our parish and, and and the events that go on in small towns, you know, everything from the snowmobile races to the, the big Christmas parade and stuff. So all those elements were true to life back in the 70s, even the music I listened to, uh, the things we got for Christmas, um, the television shows we watched, and we only had three channels. We watched <laughs> every one of them a lot. So yeah, so it, I, I used all those elements to bring realism to the story. And then the story itself is fiction, obviously. I, I don't time travel. I don't have kids that age right now. So, um, but yeah, that's it. It was really a lot from my small town upbringing. So you had told me before, it's a little bit inspired by your own life that you had kind of thought at first you were going to write this memoir and then you changed it into the time travel story. Why, why the switch? Yeah, 
Um, well, the main reason is after talking to another writer, she had kind of read the first draft and she said, who do you think will be buying this book? Who will be your, your readers? And I said, well, I would think people who grew up in the 60s and 70s would read it for sure, just for the blast from the past, you know, all that fun stuff. But I also would think kids in this day and age would read it. And she said, you know, what? I have a daughter that age and she will not read this book. She said, you have to be able to relate to that generation. And, and the best way to do that is to kind of the fish out of the water scene where you take a child from 2021 and you plunk them in 1974 and to see, you know, sink or swim, how are they going to get by? And, and to see literally what her mom went through and how her family was and her, her family life, like the person that she always called grandma was her mom's mom. So, you know, she had to like re, recall every, everybody had different names, you know, and it was so interesting for her too, because some of these people still live, it was the town she was growing up in. She lived in the house her mom grew up in. She went to the school her mom went to. So she knew all that. But some of the people her mom grew up with, um, they, they still lived in town and she knew how their lives turned out. And, and even her uncles, she knew what happened to them in life and she didn't, she didn't want to interfere with their lives, but at points she wanted to do, you know, <laughs> jump in and kind of help them, but she couldn't, she really couldn't because she didn't want to change anything. She didn't know if she was just going to be there for a day or a week or what. So she didn't want to like alter the future by doing anything. So she was kind of in a dilemma too, but she also had to go through everything her mom went through, which wasn't always easy as, you know, middle school, those are tough years for most yeah. everybody. And uh, some things have been around forever, bullying and, you know, being teased and picked on and things like that. So she had to go through it, you know, do yeah, the best those, she could. Those perennial problems, they always, they come, they come up. I've been teaching middle school for a long time. And the, the basic problems, maybe the way they happen, the way the bullying has happened, uh, cyber bullying versus in-person bullying, but yes, the problems yes. are still there. All right. So who do you think is really going to be reading this then? Do you think it is going to be more for the teens or is it going to be more for the flower power era crew? <laughs> well, the funny thing is um, the book's been out for a week now and I am getting feedback from all ages as young as 13 or 14, literally all the way up into their eighties. Even my own mom's reading the book right now. And I, I am getting the most gratifying notes from people, people who grew up even in the fifties and the sixties and the seventies, are sending me notes like, oh my gosh, it's just like, you're bringing it all back to life. I remember, all, I, rem I haven't thought about that in years. And I even got a note from somebody who said, how did you get my diary from seventh grade? <laughs> like, this is my life. You're talking about my life. And we lived on opposite coasts, you know, you know, it just, I think it was just kind of how the era was in the seventies. And I really think people are enjoying this, you know, blast from the past and, and recalling, the, the fun, the innocence, the music, but the tough times that we all went through. But you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. All right, well, if people wanna find out more about you or your books, where should they go? Okay, if people wanna just read my blog, they can go to amandalower.com, easy enough. If they want to purchase the books, they can get on, on Amazon. All my books are on Amazon. And also my publisher is Full Quiver Publishing. So fullquiverpublishing.com. And also Catholic Teen Books. They carry all my books that are young adult books. So excellent, excellent. Yes, you and I are both on that one. You can go find out about all of our books over there. Plus that yeah. new anthology that you're going to be in. I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Um, I'm going to have another author on soon. Yeah, it's great. It's actually it just came out today. And we just found out it's the number one new release for uh, Christian teens today. So I'm pretty excited about that. Excellent. Yeah. Good news. All yeah. right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Amanda. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate it. All right. I'm going to wave goodbye to Amanda. Bye. <laughs> and we're just going to wrap up here. You guys just voted. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Catholic Live. Go check out Amanda's books. Go look her up on Amazon, on fullquiverpublishing.com and amandalauer.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can always get the latest episodes of Catholic Live. And hey, if you've read any of Amanda's books, leave her a comment on YouTube or when I post this up on Instagram, leave it there. Um, let her know and share this video with other people you think might like Amanda's books. Hey, you know anyone else who was a child of the 70s? They would probably enjoy Amanda's book too. So um, until next time, I'm gonna try to shut this down so we're no longer live on Facebook, but I haven't stopped my Zoom meeting. Let's see if I can do it again. Until next time, everyone.